Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas I like. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Banshee. So in this episode, some in- very interesting things went down. Uh, for one, finally got Joe back. Uh, apparently, Joe, is, he w- obviously, you know, we found out he was alive at the end of the last episode. Like I said, I found out a little sooner just because I ended up seeing the uh, ep- the title of this episode, bef- you know, like, what was it, like, Two weeks ago, I ended up seeing the um, episode title, so that instinctly made me think, oh, Job's still alive. But uh, apparently, he's been holding out this entire time because they've been trying to break him for information, but they weren't able to break him. So they took him to a black site, kind of treated him like a terrorist to get all the information he had, because he hasn't said, spilled any details about any of the stuff he knows. So in this episode, we have Hood um, capturing... That guy, Leo, the guy who kidnapped Job uh, at the end of season three, uh, using him uh, as a way to find, you know, Job. And they end up making a deal. Basically, they take all the money that they stole from the end of the se- uh from last season, all their money, like everyone shares. They put it together and they went to go make a trade that money for uh, Job but ends up being a trap. But they were kind of prepared for it and they start taking everyone out. Uh, they even leave that guy. um the main guy that was like torturing Job, which was like, that was some pretty rough stuff, uh, particularly that binding him to the chair and flashing those bright lights in front of his face. That was pretty intense. Um, but Job was the one that put a bullet in it. Before he can even ask, he was like, so what are you going to do Job? before he can even finish that? Job put a bullet in his head. Um, we kind of get a little bit of a look at Job. Job isn't like the lot kind of like the lovable part that you love about Job. He's not as wild and loud mouth and flamboyant as he was. He's very quiet and kind of just like unsteady, you know. It's, it's like granted, he's been through a lot of shit, so it's to be understandable. It's understandable because he even brings up, you know, because Carrie's like, you can, you know, stay with me. I mean, he's a little upset because the fact is, they he finds out that the money that they, you know, his share of the money is going because. Uh, it was in the van with Leo when he drove away. I was like, I did not want the SOB to get away, but he freaking got away. I know he's going to come back and cause some damn problems. But, um, and Job's kind of like, so it was all for nothing. He's like, literally, I've been going through hell for 20 months. I come back, I want my money. It's not even there. I'm basically, it all means nothing. And Sugar kind of tries to put a silver lining to us. Like, at least you're alive and all that, you know. Uh, he even asked, he's like, I am going to have to ask you, though. I am curious to find out why it took you 20 months to get me. Um, he actually finds out about, finds out about the Gordon situation. He's like, you know, I'm trying to find out is Gordon in or out. So I'm wondering if he was, which makes me wonder, is he under the impression that Gordon was going to be a part of their team now or something? You know, their team of thieves. But if she informs him that, you know, uh, Hood informs him that. Gordon didn't make it, and it's just like, and he, because he was going to stay with Carrie, and that's what kind of started the whole conversation. Um, another thing in this episode is Kurt's situation. Um, we kind of see a little bit more of what's going on with him and his brother Calvin's wife, which, yeah, him and Calvin are blood brothers. Like, a, I don't know. Like I said, I it's been a while, so I didn't remember if they were, you know, legitimate brothers, or were they just like oh we're close like brothers uh we're part of the same group so we're brothers it's like no they're blood brothers uh essentially you know kind of find out like a little bit of his work we see a little bit of his recovery it seemed like he was a little bit on edge he kind of shut himself out from the world because uh calvin's wife came to visit him to drop off some groceries and stuff like that and around that time i guess it kind of you know she was kind of the only person to kind of extend an olive olive branch to him so that kind of made him You know, then them to kind of get closer and they end up, you know, that's kind of led to their sexual relationship of theirs, which makes me wonder, like, was a relationship always like that? Did like did Calvin come into like cause the way to make it seem like is that there was a thing between them first, but then her, Calvin kind of hooked up with her like they her and Calvin got together, got married, had a kid. Um Essentially, she's like, this can't happen anymore. And essentially, Kurt wants to arrest him. He's just like, I got to find some dirt on my bro to arrest him. His wife is straight out like, you have to kill him. And he's like, I can't kill him. He's my brother. 
it's just like I can't believe it just it blows my mind that she suggested that but she's like her reasoning for it is because it's like her dad was kind of like a guy like him um essentially pushy and mean and she's like essentially that her dad being like that made her go out to find a guy just like her dad and she doesn't basically she doesn't want her son to turn out turn out like them which we also had that guy that uh, Calvin's meeting in the prison that's basically telling Calvin to cut his shit out and do what Proctor says. And he's kind of like, why are we doing what Proctor says anyway? He's like, because I said so. At first, I won't lie to you. I was thinking in the back of my mind, he's his, is that, could that be their dad? I was like, no, he'd be much, much older. That must be like whoever, that must be Calvin's boss and, and you know, he, um, who he um, works for, you know. It would shows you how powerful he is if he's able to kind of like run that organism, run that group from inside of a jail cell, which is kind of sad because it kind of puts Calvin in his place because Calvin's, you know, talking his mouth off of last episode about how he wants to be topped. Like he, he's tired of being someone's bitch. He's tired of being everyone's bitch. You know, don't he wants to do what he wants to do. So this is more of an example of him being someone else's bitch. Sorry for saying that repeatedly. Uh, and also in this episode, we had that whole thing with, um, well, we had, uh, that new, uh, deputy, Cruz, the one that works for Proctor, uh, coming to him, telling her about the whole vigilante thing, which we know it to be Carrie. Still not 100% sure why I under, like, understanding that whole situation, you know, what I mean, hopefully, you know, there's plenty of episodes left this season. We still got like seven more episodes this season, so it's like maybe we'll kind of finally get to understand more about that, like why she's doing what she's doing. I mean, I guess you could, we already know it's kind of to vent some of her anger, but it's like, how does that whole thing work? Because it seems like everyone she's going after, particularly obviously, are people that Proctor lets off. So. At first, he's like, is it Brock? And, and then Cruz is like, yeah, Brock runs his mouth about you, but he'd never kind of go about things this way. So it's like shit's going to hit the fan when they find out that it's Carrie. But it's like also because, you know, it seems like Kurt's helping her do it. So maybe this is secretly because, you know, Kurt is trying to take down his brother. So he's helping take down Proctor as well. But it's like, why would Carrie help too? Like, it seems like why would Carrie even be invested in any of this? Maybe she kind of got brought in on this, but she doesn't really care about the people. She just wants to beat the crap out of someone to vent her anger. But in this episode, we also had Proctor, um, or multiple things. We had, um, her, uh, Rebecca's mom and dad wanting her body back. Can we, we find out a little bit more about how she died, which tore me up and inside, like hearing that essentially she was drugged and she was kind of kept awake. She was alive when she was, uh, when the killer cut her open and cut her heart out. She was still alive then. Uh, she was kind of, uh, just whatever he gave her kind of put her in a half awake state. So, um, but essentially, her family wants her body back, and Brock wants to try and, you know, work with them on that. You know, her her mom and dad. Uh, you, she, her mom even has a conversation with Kai, and Kai's like, "I'll try to expedite it. You know, make it a little faster." It's like his sister's like, "No, if you wanted to, you can. You used to doing." things illegally so it's like what you know what makes this situation any different she's like i was hoping you know my daughter would leave and then she you know she might have got kicked out but she'd come back to us eventually but she's like the moment she went to live with you she was damned you know god was going to punish her for it and you know that but essentially rebecca's blood was on his hand which is kind of messed up for you to say because it's like it's he's not she wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place if you hadn't kicked her out granted it's like I don't really have the right to say that because it's like, you know, the reason why they kicked her out is because their 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 religion, you know, follows their religion slash lifestyle, you follow a certain set of rules and it's just like she kept breaking them, so but it's not, you know, because it's not they kinda turned her back on her so she wouldn't be in that situation in the first place. But it's like, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around, not just to Kai. And I did like the situation where he brought brought that girl home. Uh essentially he just uh what's her name? Cherry, but, you know, her real name was Jennifer, brought her home because, you know, trying to fill that void. He even lets her stay in um, Rebecca's room, and the girl's like, are we going to fuck? He's like, no, 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 you just stay here. I just, you know, you can stay as long as you want to. And he, she's like, well, whose room is this? He's like, someone that was very special to me. Granted, she tried to rob him, and he kind of lost his shit and almost killed her. Just because in his mind, it was just like, 
you know, he's like, I let you into my house, I try to be nice to you, I try to give you things, and you you try to betray me like this, he smacked her around a little bit, too, but while he was choking her, all he could do was see is Rebecca, and this show is setting it up so hard that it's Proctor that killed her, they, like I said, he kind of has his own disturb, like, you know, like I said, him and Rebecca kind of, like, to me, it seemed like she they had that type of relationship, like, more than just a familial relationship, I've, I hinted at it last time, like, you know, incestual, like I said, I've, I've seen hints of it throughout the series so far, so that's what came to mind, but it's like, maybe it's nothing like that. Like, you know, he was trying so hard to bring that essence back into his life. I thought it would have been interesting if we had gotten more of that, like, you know, she hadn't tried to rob him, that he actually, you know, tried to treat her more like Rebecca, have her dress more like Rebecca, act more like Rebecca. It would have been interesting to see that in this episode. Maybe we'll get to see that a little bit later on in the season, like, you know, him bringing different girls into the house to kind of fill that empty void. And speaking of Rebecca, we uh, Brock, you know, ended up finding out some very interesting things, which led to him arresting Hood at the very end of the episode for her murder. Um, essentially, because of her blood in the car, which we know it's from it's, um, him getting shot, you know, helping her out, and um, which you know, at the beginning of the episode, we see her kind of pulling the bullets out of um, the um, pellets from the shotgun out of his um, side, so. Um, there's that, but also because she was pregnant, which Hood didn't know. It's like, whoa. Which I kind of, I kind of had that feeling when brought, like, camera, camera kind of went out of focus to show, uh, Rebecca's body. And then he's like reading, like, what the, uh, Emmy had found. And he's just like, holy crap. And I was like, she's preg she was pregnant, wasn't she? And pregnant with Hood's baby, apparently. So, but at the very end, we do see a new victim being attacked. So, this is proof that Hood isn't the killer, but it, it just makes you wonder who is, because it's like, to me, I feel like it can't just be some random person. It has to be someone, like, we know in this, ep like, amongst the main guys, it's got to be someone we know. Just because, I feel like, because the, the way they're setting it up, it has to be, because I feel like that's going to be the big twist, is finding out who the serial killer is. So. This is going to be, uh, this vi new victim is going to be victim number four, which I don't... We st honestly still have not seen the other two victims, so it's like, I don't know. You see Brock is super reluctant to arrest um, Hood, but, you know, he did it anyway. And interestingly enough, it makes you wonder, like, how is Proctor going to react to this? Because Cruz is, you know, because I doubt Brock's going to announce that they've arrested Hood. I don't know, maybe that's kind of going to be, you know, out there. But it's like, I kind of don't think Brock's going to do that. Because I think he's going to give Hood the benefit of the doubt and try to, you know, find other, you know, uh, you know, proof that it's not Hood. But it's like, Cruz, she's going to run her mouth to Proctor and be like, oh, we captured a guy. We think it's Hood. And it's like, how is he going to handle that situation? Not, probably not. Uh, that well, especially when he finds out that Hood knocked her up and got her pregnant, he is going to most likely uh, kill Hood. So, I don't know. I cannot wait. This, this series, this season is gripping me. Like, I, I've loved every season prior to this, but like I say, it's like, this is like the very first big mystery in the Banshee series. Um, there's never been a big there's always been twists and turns into plots, but it's this is like the biggest mystery that's ever existed in the series. So. I'm quite enjoying it, and I'm quite enjoying like you know the little flashes we're getting to find out like you know what happened in these like two years. Really, uh, uh, is it? It's like two years to one and a half years because it makes it seem like it was only like twenty months or whatever that um has passed. I mean. Really, it is. No, 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 because it has been two years because uh, he spent about six months looking for Joe before he just up and left. And the next year and a half, he was living in that place on Proctor's property. So, yeah. But anyway, can't wait for the next episode. Just season is so good. But that's really all I want to talk about this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.